I'm going to be tying my version of the squimp, uh, a sea run cutthroat and coho salmon fly that was first introduced here in the uh, Puget Sound area about 10 years ago. Now I know there's a popular bonefish fly called the squimp, uh, which looks like this. But this one isn't anything to do with that, so if you're after the bonefish fly, uh, you should click away right now. So I first saw this about five years ago in a YouTube video by Nick Clayton. And uh, since then, it has easily been one of the top four or five flies that I use. It's always in my fly box, and uh, it works pretty much all the year round, and in most conditions. The squimp first appeared in a local fishing blog, tied by a guy called Mark Mercer. Um, and you can see it's got a long marabou tail with the sides of golden pheasant tippet. Now the only problem with fishing this, um, or really any fly with a long marabou tail, is that the tail is prone to fouling the hook bend. Uh, so it will often end up looking like this. Uh, and when that happens, uh, your leader tends to get spun up and it's really unlikely that any self-respecting fish is going to look twice at it. Uh, and the most likely reason for this happening is, is human error, you know, uh, a jerky casting stroke. If you were to make a perfectly smooth cast every time, you'd probably rarely foul that hook at all. But uh, being as we're often casting into the wind on the beaches and using fast action rods and aggressive, you know, shooting head style fly lines, it, it is hard to cast perfectly smoothly every time. Now, in an attempt to circumvent this problem, uh, I tie all my squimps now with a very small amount of bucktail in the lower part of the tail. And that's just stiff enough to keep the marabou from twisting around into that hook. Now, it isn't going to totally prevent the occasional snarl up, but believe me, it does greatly cut down on it. So, when I look recently uh, at that original Mark Mercer blog post, I found that several commentators had already suggested this uh, bucktail solution to hook fouling. And uh, Mark said he'd tried it, but he found that the action of the fly was compromised. Um, but I've got to say, in my experience, if you keep the amount of bucktail small, the fly still has a ton of movement and it catches fish just fine. Um, and I'll show some fish being caught at the end of the video. Uh, now, I've also been tying this in a black and white version using Lady Amherst tippets instead of the golden pheasant. But really, I haven't fished this one enough to be able to say how well it compares with the original shell pink version. Now, as I said, this will catch coho as well as sea run trout, and you can use basically the same fly for both. The only difference I would suggest is using a strong wire hook like the Daiichi 2546 uh, in size 6 if you tie these for salmon. But I'm going to tie this one as I would for cutthroat. Um, and I'm going to use the Gamakatsu SS15 in size 8. And I'll start by putting on a bead. Uh, in this case I'm using a 5 seconds inch brass bead, but I also keep a few on hand that I've tied with a 1 8 inch bead uh, for if I'm fishing shallow and need the fly to sink more slowly. I've already crushed down the barb on this hook there you go uh, so my thread is UTC 70 denier in fluorescent shell pink I'm going to start that right behind the bead and then make a, a thread base back as far as where the barb would have been Now, I don't have any shell pink bucktail, but instead I'm just going to use orange, which I find blends in pretty well. And I'm going to take a clump of hair from uh, more towards the base of the tail rather than the tip, where it's just a little bit straighter and stiffer. And I am going to stack it. But first of all, I'll just remove any shorter hairs and other rubbish. and into the stacker and 
now the tips are neatly lined up and I have I would say about 15 hairs in this bunch I'm going to make the tail between um, one and a half and two hook lengths and for now I'm just going to hold it in place with about half a dozen thread wraps and I'm trying to keep that hair uh, mostly along the top of the shank and I'll just trim that to the length of the body like so now I've got here some select marabou in shrimp pink and I like to use uh, just the tips of these feathers you can always keep the webbier material you know, from some, for something else and I'm going to tie this right on top of the bucktail so I'll just get it in position how I want it with a few thread turns just, just to hold it and then I'm going to cut those feathers uh, to the length of the body now I'll tie that down and then wrap it back to the base of the tail alright now I'm going to take a single strand of pearl crystal flash and cut it in two and then I'm going to tie that in along my side basically the same length as the tail or um, you can make it uh, a little bit longer and I'll fold those back and tie them in along your side now this next bit is what makes the whole fly work uh, giving it that shrimpy look so you can buy a whole golden pheasant head like this and it's nice because you get the crest feathers which have many uses or you can go for a tippet section like this what you don't want to do is buy loose tippet feathers because they'll be these big feathers uh, which is grand if you're making salmon flies but way too big for tying squimps so I've already selected a couple of feathers from the head and I've trimmed away uh, any broken fibers I want this to extend about halfway into the tail I'm going to just hold that in place with a few wraps now don't obsess about getting the fibers all beautiful they're going to splay and separate but when it's wet everything's going to blend together perfectly um, so I've matched the feather on the other side so that the dark bands line up that looks okay now I'll trim those stems to length like that and then just secure everything tightly into place and then return my thread back to the base of the tail now originally the squimp had a body of pink chenille but I'm not a big chenille fan and I prefer a dub body which is more translucent like a shrimp so I use ice dub in the same color as the marabou and then uh, when I've got enough of this dubbed onto my thread I'll push it up and just catch it on uh, and that lets me tighten it up as I go I'm not building uh, much of a taper as I wind on the body I kind of keep it pretty much the same the whole way along So just tie that in and I could leave them but I'll just uh, trim away some of these longer fibers 
There we are. Now I'm going to add the hackle, which is uh, going to be the tips of this schlappen. And on my desk I happen to have some of this same uh, fluorescent shrimp pink as the rest of the fly, but white also works really, really well. So I want the hackle to reach back and cover the entire body, and it's going to create a lot of movement without adding much bulk. So that point there seems to give me the right length. So I'll expose the tip right there. And then just trim that feather to make uh, a little tie-in point. So I'm going to tie that in right in front of the body and uh, behind the bead. I'm going to stroke these fibers back and then make three uh, turns with the feather. That's my third turn. So I can tie that off. Now re remove that surplus piece. And I'm going to hold everything back and just take a few more wraps onto the hackle to help it lie back. Let's try and catch those two fibers there. Alright, now I want to fill in that little gap there with a tiny bit more dubbing. Don't have to do that, but I like to do it. Don't need very much here. should do it. Now I can uh, whip finish. Cut my thread. And I'll just tidy up a few of those uh, stray fibers. And I can finish it with a little drop of uh, a thin UV resin just to soak into that knot. And that is the fly finished. So I'm going to put a materials list at the end. Uh, and also add a little bit of footage of the fly being fished. Um, and I hope you can give this uh, great pattern a try. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and good luck.